Hello and welcome to this episode of the Print On Demand Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Kerry Egler, here with my co-host, Adrian Von Arks. And today, we got much more passionate than we thought we would, talking about three ways to increase repeat sales, which equates to more profit in your business. So this is a really exciting episode. But before we hop in, if you would, please subscribe to this podcast. It really helps us grow the podcast and we'd love to see what you think of this content. So we're excited about this episode and we, before we dive in, here's a quick word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Gelato, the world's largest print-on-demand network. Gelato enables individuals ranging from e-commerce entrepreneurs to artists and creatives to establish their own global business. What makes Gelato truly unique is their focus on local production. The item being delivered is produced in the country that the order is placed almost 90% of the time, leading to numerous benefits for you, including lower costs, faster delivery times, and reduced carbon emissions. The focus on technology to bring together over 130 production facilities across 32 countries truly sets them apart. Not only that, they currently have the highest customer satisfaction score in the POD industry on Trustpilot. To check them out for yourself, go to sixfigurefounder.com backslash gelato and use the discount code POD playbook, all caps, to get 60% off your first order when placed within 72 hours. That's the number six figurefounder.com backslash G E L A T O. You can also find the link and discount code in the podcast show notes or in the video description on YouTube. What is up, everybody? We are so happy to have you guys here for this episode where we are really just talking about three simple ways to drive more repeat sales. Um, this is going to be maybe a quicker episode. You know, we say that every time. So we're just not even going to, we're not even going to say that it is going to be anymore. We'll just kind of like go with the flow, but Carrie, how are you, man? What's going on? I noticed the new backdrop, new yeah. setting there. And I know you have some other big stuff going on too. Yeah. If you're watching on, if you're watching on YouTube, got the new, got the new office, which is cool. It's about, uh, it's about, so I moved out of my house office, out of my home office, um, into an office like uh, about 15 minutes down the road. And it's actually, this office is awesome. It's uh, very quiet and it's really big. We've got a lot of room in here to do, to do stuff. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to create a second backdrop. So I have like two that I can kind of do different things with, but this is the initial setup. I'm going to paint and stuff, but I'm pumped. I'm pumped to be in here, dude. It's uh, as much as I love being home and having access to everything and families there. It's like, it's a blessing and a curse. It's like, <laughs> love it but you hate it so now i've got like i've been enjoying about a week in this office of just peace and quiet like i can just stop yeah, and agree. just there's no kids screaming there's no, <laughs> there's no wife asking me to do different chores around the house it's just uh just amazing I'm it looks so like much a really cool yeah, it looks like a really calming environment. Like it almost looks like a therapist chair in the background. You know what I mean? That big comfy chair. It's like a therapist it's office. A, you can just it's a couch, down. man. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, dude. Oh, is that a couch? It's a therapist couch. couch. You can lay across it. No, you it's can't. Uh, you actually can't see them in the shot. But I've got these two huge, uh, like LED light things that you can change color. So like, I'll turn them off real quick, and you'll see see how the color changed. Oh like, yeah. The, the blue. Here's the blue is about to go off. Wait. Dude, you're doing that from your phone? That's so cool. That's really cool. Okay, wait. No, I still got the blue on. Why is it loading? But anyways, I can I change the colors. A little right more here. gray. Yeah. L look over on this side. Yeah. Should, well, now it's saying just operation failed. It's just not working. <laughs> anyways, then the red just came back on. Progress. Saw the red. A little yeah. bit. I think I saw a little bit. Blue's off now. Here comes the blue. The blue will come back on this side. Anyways, <laughs> people Dude, listening right sweet. now, there's the blue. The blue is back. Anyways. People different vibes. Right now, people listening right now are like, what the, what are they doing? Yeah, like, what is he talking about? Yeah, I got all these crazy lights. I got all these remotes where I can turn off stuff, you know? Oh, cool. Pretty sweet. There goes my lamp. Boom. Yeah. That's awesome. Anyways. All within it, all within the arm's reach, man. <laughs> also, let's talk about t-shirt stuff. Uh, we're doing a launcher brand challenge right now. So I, so not Adrian, but me and my business shirt school, 
we're putting on a launcher brand challenge. It's a five day training event where I train live for five days. And right now when you're listening to this, uh, it's, it's, it's the almost the last day, but actually when you're listening to this, we're right in the middle of it, but Adrian's speaking tomorrow, which is really cool. Yes. Uh, he, he comes on to my event. He speaks and he, he always brings the fire, but, uh, I can't if, wait. You, if you're listening to this right now and you're, you've been doing the challenge this week, like if you've been a part of the challenge, you get to hear Adrian tomorrow. If you're listening to this on Friday, they might be I'm listening fired to this up here though. They could be, it could be Monday. It could be a month from now. If you're listening to this in like 2025, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the next one, but uh, <laughs> but no, I'm, dude, I'm I'm so fired up. It's always fun talking to the students, and it's always good vibes, good energy. They fire me up. It's just like a big love fest, man. I it's I can't so wait. Fun. Like it's always such good energy, and um, that definitely gets me going. So as a side note, we're always talking about these live events. I do a five day live event. We together do a two day workshop event. Yep. And so like, if you're listening right now and you like have never been a part of one of these live events, what are you doing? Like, join us, join come us. On. Come on, let's have fun. You're invited. You're invited. Uh, yeah. Yes, for sure. All right. Cool. Well, we got a review? before we hop into the, the main event for today, I just want to share a review from Apple because you know, we love you guys and we always want to shout you guys out. So. I'm just going to read this review from BPC Mom, and it's a five-star review. Thank you so much. It says, helpful and informative. That's the heading. And the uh, review says, great guys that are willing to share their knowledge and enthusiasm doing something they love. We can feel the passion. Yes, let's go. Uh, Thank you for all of your help. You thank you for all the help you are offering. Well, thank you, thank BPC, you Mom. BPC Mom. You're awesome. It. We really appreciate that. We really appreciate every single review we get. So thank you guys. Please keep them coming. It's really inspiring for us. Um, it also helps the podcast. Uh, so uh, yeah, with that, why don't we transition into the content for today? And we are talking about ways to increase your profit with repeat sales. And we're really just gonna focus on three ways. Now there is more ways than this, but we're gonna focus on three main ways in this episode. And I wanted to kind of just like start with a little monologue here, Carrie, if that's okay with you, um, talking about why repeat sales are so important. And I wanted to share a little kind of excerpt something that I heard from a mentor of mine. I thought he did a really good job of explaining this. So I'm just going to like explain it. And then I'm going to talk about what my mentor said, uh, just to help put things into perspective. So let's talk, let's start by talking about why repeat sales are so important because they are, if you don't know that, yes, like there's no doubt, like you need repeat sales to create a long-term profitable business. There's, there's just no questions asked. So, you know, if you've been in the t-shirt or apparel space for some time, you probably know that the profits, the real profits are in the repeat sales. And here's why. It's important to realize that much of the profit from a first time sale can be eaten up by marketing costs. If you are running any sort of paid ads, like Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok, Google ads, and that cost associated with acquiring a new customer that's known as a cost per acquisition or a CAC, customer acquisition cost. What's important to know is that when you are running paid ads, there's gonna be what's called that cost per acquisition for those new customers. And what this means is that you're paying a cost in the form of advertising dollars to make sales and to get customers. And that is going to affect your profit margins. But here's the good news. The cost per acquisition cost that you pay to acquire the new customer, in most cases, this is a one-time cost because you can then remarket to them with lower cost marketing tools. So for example, let's say that you spent $15 on Facebook ads to acquire a customer and they're really happy with their purchase. They fall in love with your brand and they become a raving fan. If this is the case, there's a high likelihood that they're going to join your email list because they 
love everything that you do and they want to be in the know. And what's nice about that is they'll probably also start following your social media where you can continue marketing to them, your products, your promotions, anything that you're doing, you'll have a high likelihood of getting that in front of them. Now, whether this customer buys from you one time or 10 times, you only paid that one time $15 cost per acquisition to acquire that customer. So that means with each additional purchase, that customer is actually going to become more profitable for you. And there are a number of t-shirt brands out there that run ads profitably, but there's also a lot that actually run ads at a break even profit margin because they know, like they've analyzed their data. They looked at their numbers. They looked, they've calculated their customer lifetime value. And they know that a certain percentage of customers come back and make repeat purchases. So it actually is a, a very safe, almost forecastable decision for them. And they know that it's going to be profitable in the long run. Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, then this strategy can actually be very, very profitable. Because even let's say that you're running ads, let's say that uh, you're running ads at a break even. Not only are you getting immediate sales and you're acquiring customers immediately, but there's a good chance that a lot of people aren't actually going to make a purchase right away. Like we surveyed the customers. We did a post-purchase survey um, for our customers. And we found that a lot of them said that they bought after six months. That's wow. crazy. Like you don't think about that when you're running ads, right, Carrie? You just, no. you just don't think about that. You're, you're always like, looking at- Can I get at, that next sale? Can I get that next sale? Yeah. Right. You're looking at ads manager. You're looking at your like immediate revenue and you're making a lot of your decisions based on that. And that's okay. Uh, what you should know is that ads manager uh, really underreports a lot. So Carrie and I, we always recommend looking at your revenue, like your overall sales in your Shopify store compared to your ad spend versus ads manager, because there's a lot of sales that come through ads manager that are not reported on there. And you don't want to go ahead and kill a, a, you know, a profitable ad. You just don't want to yeah. do that. But even if you were going at a break, even there's still massive benefits. Like if I was running a thousand dollars a day in ads at a break, even I would do that all day, all day, all day, because you're going to get, first, you're going to get a lot of immediate sales, but then you're going to get out a lot of later sales. I don't know what you call them, like delayed sales, sales over the next week, month, two months, three months, four months, six months, even that those people were brought in through an ad. They subscribe to your email list, let's say, and then Black Friday comes along and they just go nuts and make a huge purchase because they've been waiting for Black Friday or yep. there's just a really good deal or you just drop like a winning design and a whole bunch of those people that have been on your email list for a long time, they're like, I need that. Like that is so me. Yes. Those people become customers later on the road, not to mention like you're growing your email list, you're growing your social media list. Uh, you're getting a lot of customer data, which actually helps Facebook um, improve your ads. It helps optimize your ads better by feeding them more data. There's just so many benefits to even running at a break even. But I just wanted to kind of get the point across that it's the repeat sales that are really where the profit comes. And I really like the way that one of my mentors explained this. And he actually heard it from one of his mentors. So I want to try to kind of explain briefly what he said. So I think he did a really good job of kind of clearly explaining the value of repeat customers. He said, a portion or all of your profit from a first time sale is generally consumed by tolls when you're out in the marketplace advertising. So let's just say Facebook ads, for example, that means, so let's say you run ads, let's say you run Facebook ads and you're spending money on paid advertising. Let's say you spend, like I said earlier, $15 to acquire a customer. That money goes to Facebook or wherever you're running ads in the form of a toll to drive traffic with paid ads. And what's interesting about that is that once you acquire someone as a customer through one of these toll based channels, i.e. paid advertising, it's much more profitable for them to purchase again, rather than going out and getting a new customer, because you can bring that customer back through a toll free or a non toll based channel like email or SMS marketing. 
Yes. And this makes repeat customers significantly more profitable than first time customers because you don't have to pay that toll again. And by getting more profit from each sale, you can then allocate that profit back into the business to help your business grow. And that not only is going to help you in the short term, that's actually going to make your business more valuable as a whole. Like if you want to resell your business, you're going to have a lot more information, a lot more everything, a lot more emails, a lot more social media followers, a lot more customer data. And that's going to make if you're looking to build a sellable asset, that's going to make it even more valuable. So I like how kind of like he explained it in the tools way. I think that makes it really simple and it really gets a point across that, you know, how much more profitable the repeat sales can be. Did, does that all make sense, Kerry? Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff in there to unpack. A couple of things I wanted to add was uh, when you were talking about, you know, breaking even on ads and kind of that kind of thing, it brought to mind, you know, there's actually a, a business term um, for companies that will that will lose money on the front end because they know they'll make it back on the back end through repeat sales. It's called being mm. a loss leader. This is a term you'll hear being a loss leader. Now we don't necessarily recommend that with you know what we teach, but it is interesting because you see this a lot in um, you see this a lot in software companies, right? A software company will say, "Hey, we'll give you a 14 day free trial," and you know they might they might get one month off of that or something at say $50, right? They would likely pay, you know, depending on their customer lifetime, value, they might pay $500 to get that one, you know, one month of that software because they know if they get, you know, for however many they get of those, their average lifetime value is like 12 months, right? And so over 12 months, like they're going to make maybe double that or triple that, right? So they know that they'll make it up in future months. And this is why you see a lot of companies that take on a ton of like capital up front, or you need loans and that kind of thing, because they're typically typically going to lose a bunch of money up front uh, and then make it back over time as they acquire more customers and then increase their lifetime value and sell to them more and more and more. So the, yeah. I think it's the reason I bring that up is I think it's so interesting is because I literally went years and did not understand that this was a thing in business. Like I, I was saying, man, <laughs> like, I thought yeah. like, if my ads aren't profitable, like, what do I do? I'm just, yeah, like, because I started, I started, I started, right. I started all my, any business I've ever started. And there's been a handful of them. I've started with like little to no money, right? Like, mm. it's like, Hey, I've got a 14 day trial of Shopify. I got to make my first sale so I can pay for the next month. You know, like, <laughs> like that's how, that's how I've, I've started businesses. I didn't know that there was this idea of like starting with upfront capital or, you know, losing money on ads that that was actually like a strategy that could work. And so I think it's important that if you, whether you're an existing or new seller, but specifically if you're in your kind of, let's say your first year of, of this business, trying to figure this out. Right. And you don't have a, you know, a back end system or a strategy to actually get people to buy again, which we're going to talk about in this episode, mm -hmm. you got to do it today. And you're, and you're like, you're listening to this at such a crucial time where this can change the game for you. When you start to understand that if you're breaking even on an ad and you're able to get three or four more sales from that person over the next six to 12 months, mm -hmm. like crank up the ads, max out the credit card. Cause you're going to be like, it's going to be, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that's what I did. And all your money go I, I, heavily in debt. Get a get, a, like get a loan from ClearBank. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally no, but, kidding. but like, but like, yeah. When I, I learned mean, this. I, I I learned this. I had to have learned this from Russell Brunson because the yeah. the funnel. You know, Russell Brunson, the the founder of Click, one of the founders of Click Funnels. Reading all of his books and everything. Like the first time that I realized this is actually kind of an interesting story. I'll try to keep it brief, but. I was running a Shopify store. The first time I heard of this concept, I immediately went, I got to do this with t-shirts. And the concept was basically with, you know, what Russell was teaching is this funnel strategy of like, once you get the first sale, you offer a bunch of upsells, right? And you could think mm -hmm. of that in the same vein of repeat sales, because when you, when you get the first sale, you've already gotten that sale. So this is technically when you do an upsell, it's kind of a repeat sale, right? Because it's additional, mm -hmm. it's additional add-ons, but you kind of think of it in that same, that same vein. And then obviously Russell teaches about email marketing and all the different back-end funnels that you can do. And when this clicked, it was like, oh my gosh, I gotta try this with t-shirts, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's when I started to started to implement <clears throat> some of those strategies to get people to not only buy one t-shirt or one product, but then buy additional t-shirts, whether that be through upsells or through email marketing or different different ways to do that. So 
this changed the game for me, like absolutely mm -hmm. changed the game for me, made me tons of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's just a, such a crucial thing to learn in your journey of building your apparel business. So yeah, let's do it, this. It, yeah, th that was well said. And, and it comes back to one, the power of knowing your numbers. So, you know, we've done a past episode on uh, calculating your customer lifetime value. So yep. the, the amount of time, the amount of money a customer will spend over their lifetime with your shop. So if you guys haven't checked that out, definitely check out that episode. But knowing that and then knowing your average order value. So the average amount that a customer spends in a purchase, that's also very powerful. Kind of going on what Carrie was, was saying is, okay, let's say that you're uh, that you spend $15 to acquire a customer. And let's say that you were only going to make $15 profit. So you're at a break even, break even because you spent the $15 to acquire them. There's two, two ways to kind of think about this. One, you can get them on the back end with um, remarketing. So you can email them, you can send them SMS and you can get them to buy again and again, again. Amazing. Love it. That's super, that can be super profitable for you. It should be super profitable for you. But then there's the other way that Carrie mentioned, which is upsells. Like if Huge. you can get people, if you can upsell people, so let's say that they're they're drawn in by a, a, a t-shirt. Let's just say they're drawn in by a t-shirt. They come in, they're like, I need this t-shirt. They, they pull out their credit card. They're ready to buy. Like they are in the action. They're in buying mode. They've already made their decision. They've pulled out their credit card, which, you know, once they've gotten to that part, once they've like made the decision to make a purchase, it's going to be easier to get them to make a purchase again, because you built the trust. They, they believe that it's legit. They believe that it's going to be a good product. Um, and with upsells, you can get the amount that they spend up. So if you were only making $15 profit on a t-shirt that they bought, but you got them to buy another t-shirt or a sweatshirt or a hoodie or a matching pair of leggings or, or something like that, then all of a sudden you're making way more than $15 profit. Mm -hmm. The $15 profit was gone with the first item, but every additional item is just extra. That's extra profit. So that's going to actually make your uh, ads have a higher likelihood of being profitable than just trying to sell them on one product and not incorporating any sort of upsells, cross sells, anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, cool. uh, yeah. Let's dive into the three ways because let's uh, go, I, get, I get fired up about repeat sales, man. Oh, dude. So many stats. The profit is in the repeat just, sales. Yes. That, that's where that's the big what profit this is. Episode should be called. The profit is in the repeat sales. Like, so let's just talk about kind of the three ways that we want to share in this episode. So hopefully this is pretty easy to digest. Um, we're going to try to keep it pretty high level here. Kara, did you want to kick off the first one? Yeah. The first way to drive repeat sales, we've been hinting at it, uh, but this mm -hmm. is uh, send regular email marketing campaigns. And what we're talking about specifically when we talk about this way is when you're actually kind of manually sending out campaigns. Now, these are important because, you know, you can promote things in the moment. You can do product launches, different things like that, right? So these are typically not automated emails, but they're actually emails you're sending each and every week. So it's very powerful because every email sent, you have the potential of making additional sales. So we would recommend at least one sending one email per week, but ideally two to three emails per week. That's kind of where I fall. Um, mm -hmm, you same. can send more. There are brands that email me every day. Somehow, like we, we bought uni school uniforms for the kids from Gap. We bought some uniforms from Gap. Somehow yeah. I got on the email list. I don't oh, really no. shop at Gap much, but I, we bought uniforms <laughs> there because they got the polos and all the different things. They email me every day. Oh, they email man. me every day. But they do a really good job because probably at least a couple times a, a week I open those emails because the, the subject lines are so juicy. Um, Dude, so they're, they're doing something give, right. They're, 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 they're probably split testing subject lines. Yep. There, there is actually, <laughs> there's actually a lot of power in, in sending a lot of emails because it's more, it's more times you can get in front of a customer. Mm -hmm. And actually the opposite is also true with email. If you never email your list, they become cold and they forget about you. And then it's very, very difficult to, to make sales or anything. So it's like, you have to be consistent with your with emailing yes. your list, and so uh, so. Anyways, t and and then another thing we have here in the notes, which is which is really interesting, is you know typically you may or may not know, but email email lists typically uh, only a small portion of your email list is going to open open your emails. You might have 15, 20, 30 percent open rates. So that means mm -hmm. you know if you have thirty percent open rates, that means seventy percent of people 
are not opening that email. They're not actually seeing what's in the email. They may only be seeing the subject line or they may not see the email at all if it goes to spam or junk. So mm -hmm. you should email more frequently if possible. And another powerful thing is just resending the same email with a different subject line to everybody who didn't open the email. So yeah. you know, a good strategy, let's say you decide I wanna do two emails per week. You know, one of them is going to be a new product launch, a new design. The other one's going to be, you know, um, a, a, maybe a sale you're running that week, right? Well, what you can do is on a Tuesday, you send that email to your entire list. And then on Wednesday, you resend the same email to everybody who didn't open it and yes. just change the subject line. And you can capture another 15 or 20% of your email list and get, then you're starting to get your open rates up, you know, really high, 50, 60%. And that's something yeah. that, you know, you're... Oh, go ahead. I, no, I, I wanted to jump in there and, and, and say yeah, something. That, that's basically all I was going to say is like, you're able to reach more of your email list, right? It's a, yeah. it's a good strategy. It's a great strategy and it totally works. Like if you drop an email and you made a lot of sales, you should absolutely resend that to anyone that didn't open it. Another thing I want to say is do not assume that every customer is going to send, see every email that you send. They uh -huh. will not especially around Black Friday, Cyber Monday, like in holiday season, November, December, everyone's getting hammered with marketing emails. Like they're going to get buried so fast. So if they're not going in the spam filter, which maybe one out of four that you're sending is going into the spam filter, you never, you don't, you don't know until you're, you know, until you've delivered the email. So they might not see it because it goes into the spam filter, but Another thing is it might just get buried by a bunch of emails and never get seen. It might just get yep. pushed way down and never get open. You want to stay top and, of mind. Right. You want to stay top of mind. And that's another reason to email more. So mm -hmm. we say minimum of one email a week because for some people that's realistic for them. If they're new, if it takes them a lot of time, if they've got a lot of moving parts in their business, if they're still working on their website and they're still yeah. working on designs and you know they've got all these things going on, then maybe one a week is all you can do. But the, a long-term goal should be two to three emails per week. Um, and you can segment them too. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to send the emails to everyone. That's one of the beautiful things about Klaviyo. And I think a lot of email marketing solutions have segments where you can say, oh, this is, I'm yes. only going to send to males because it's for male products. This I'm only going to send to females because it's for female products or other reasons. This I'm only going to send to, you know, existing customers or this I'm only going to send to people who haven't actually bought from us, but they're on our email list. You can do all sorts of creative things with that. You don't yep. have to get complicated at the beginning. And I encourage you not to get too complicated at the beginning. Keep it simple. If you have a small list, just send one email a week, make a goal, like a minimum goal of one email a week. And you can just send it to everyone if you want. That's better than nothing. And you can, you know, you're going to improve over time. You're going to evolve. You're going to get better over time. But at the beginning, keep it simple. That's because something is better than nothing. Always. Yep. One, um, one tip I want to add is uh, in, in the spirit of this episode, because we're talking about repeat sales, mm -hmm. uh, a tip I want to add around email marketing is you should build campaigns that are specifically targeted towards your existing customers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm not really, I'm not talking about automating sales because we're, we're going to talk about that later. I'm talking about mm -hmm. think about specific sales or offers that are specially for your existing customers reward them for being customers this is really really powerful because people love to be a, an exclusive club an exclusive group they love you know exclusive sales that that everybody's not getting access to so if you can do yeah. some targeted campaigns uh, some targeted offers i should say to your existing customers for me those have been really, really, really profitable. And the same thing goes for, and it's not really in our notes here, but the same thing goes for even around ads, you know, running ads with specific offers to your existing customers. Like those have been some of the most profitable ad campaigns uh, that I've ever run. Yeah, man, you, you just opened up a can of worms. I have so many no. things I want to say. <laughs> no. Okay. 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 I'm going to try to keep it. I'm going to try to keep it to two things before I, I pass it the mic back to you. Okay. First of all, I, I love what you're saying. And it just reminded me of some other things. This is how we work, Carrie. We just like, I feel like we're, we're so synergetic. Like you say one thing and then it makes me think a bunch. And then I say one thing and it makes you think of a bunch. And it's great because we're getting everything out there. But the you know downside is do? sometimes our oh. episodes are 10 hours long. So yeah. <laughs> you know what we should do? 
We should but, come up with a topic and then do an episode with no notes and see what happens. Yeah, just bounce, go right. back and forth. That's I'll kind just, of what happens though. We have our notes kind of, and then we go way off. Like half, more than probably half of what we say is, I would say more than half of what we say is there's no notes. Like that's true. it's just you talking and then, you know, springing up ideas in my head and vice yeah. versa. So yeah. a couple of things I want to say, first of all, uh, one thing I really like, um, this is a little pro tip that I like to kind of go on and carry about incentivizing customers or, or even incentivizing email subscribers for being email mm -hmm. subscribers, like give them, give them value, give them a reason to be an email subscriber. And one thing that I've had a lot of success with is VIP early access. Yes. And we do this for both email and SMS. So we'll send the day before a promo, we'll send an email out and we'll say, you know, you know, you have unlocked VIP early access to our Black Friday sale and they'll get 24 hours essentially to go in and make a purchase. And it makes them feel like a VIP. And you can do yeah. the same thing for SMS and it's super powerful. It gives people a reason to keep following you because they're like, oh sweet, I get early access in case anything sells out. Maybe you're print on a man, maybe you're not print on a man, maybe things do sell out, but just creating that kind of that urgency, right? It's like, you've got 24 hours before the sale goes live and they feel great because of it. The second thing I wanted to say, you were talking about um, resending an email. If it does really good, then you resend it to anyone who didn't open it within a couple of days. 100% agree with that. It totally works. Another thing that I really love to do, here's another pro tip. If you have a winning email, I've done this before and it it's like, like you get a pause result every time. If you have a winning email, do it again. Like the exact same email, like three or six months later, the exact mm -hmm. same email and you will make sales because you're going to have a ton of new email subscribers that weren't there the first time that you ran that email, that you sent out that email. And maybe it's just for a winning design. Maybe you have a winning design and the ad creative that you use in the email, maybe it was an awesome banner of like, you know, a, a lifestyle mock-up with the design on it. And it just converted something about it really converted. Send the damn email again, like three months later or six months later. And you could literally keep doing this and keep making money every time because a lot of people are going to be seeing it for the first time. And if they're anything like your past email subscribers, then they're going to love it and they're going to purchase it. So I just want to share I, that. I wasn't I actually, I wasn't going to say that because uh, you just gave away my secrets and, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> it totally I works. I wasn't going to say it because I'm like, if you're on my if you're on my email list like like my shirt school you know t-shirt whatever email list i send the same email all the time <laughs> dude it works I send man the same emails all the time like i i am i am like the king of like if yeah. i got a template man like i'm gonna reuse the template you know what i mean yep. like, and duplicate dude, like duplicate Save a time. lot of people forget too. like they forget yeah. that they saw it. They forget the email. Maybe they were already subscribed and it went to their spam or maybe they are sub subscribed and it got buried in their email. There's a lot of reasons that even not your new email subscribers might not have seen it. But a lot of times if they see it again, like they're they're not even going to remember six months later in yeah. most cases. That's yeah. what I find. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. You take number two. Cool. Um, the only thing I, I just want to mention one more thing about number one, um, and I want to talk about email list size because there's this belief that size matters and I'm talking about email list carry. Uh, <laughs> um, Come on, so dude. there's this belief that when, it, <laughs> that when it comes to email lists, like the bigger, the better people are like, oh, it's so valuable. Like, you know, it, it like I would way rather have a bigger email list and people are very skeptical about cleaning their email list, which we highly recommend and getting rid of people that aren't opening your emails because those people offer no value to you. They actually have a reverse effect because it affects your deliverability yeah. when you have low open rates. So I just want to like debunk this myth about the size of your email list. Who cares? Like the size does not matter. It is very much quality over quantity when it comes to email list size. If you have a quality list of raving fans who are passionate about your niche and your brand, regardless of how small it is, you'll make sales. And in many cases, you'll actually make a lot more sales than other brands who have way bigger email lists because they're lower quality in a lot of cases. So you might only have 1,000 
email subscribers and you could crush it if they're if you've got 1000 loyal brand loyal email subscribers who love everything you do versus if you had 10,000 email subscribers and no one even opens up the emails there's no put, like there's no value if they don't open up the emails because they're not seeing the email anyways so we where I'm getting at here is regardless of the size of your list send them emails send your list emails yep. and I actually want to kind of double down on this because not only do you want to send them emails, but like, this is a great time to practice getting comfortable with email marketing while you have a smaller list. You can test different email campaigns and you can optimize your emails over time. Like think of this as a testing period. If you're going to be bad at emails, which you're probably going to be pretty bad to start. I was terrible yep. to start but you're going to get better the more you do. So don't you want to be bad before your list is really big? Like you're going to get better over time and your list is going to get bigger over time, most likely. So I just want to encourage you regardless, even if you have 10 subscribers, just get in the habit, get, get all those initial bad emails out and get, get better over time. And so when you get to a hundred, a thousand, 10,000, you're just a pro you're, you know, you're used to this. You're good at this. You're quicker at this. You, you know, what works, you know, it doesn't work. Um, there's, there's a lot of value in that. So, sure. um, it's good stuff. Yeah. Like size of your email list is very much a vanity metric. It means nothing. You would be, you would be shocked if you're listening, you would be shocked at how many podcasts that I've listened to where people have these crazy stories where they're like, you know, cause I would listen to all these business, business podcasts and they're just like, yeah, I have 2000 people on my email list and I have a seven figure business. And I'm just like, it's crazy, but yeah. there it, it's, it's not that dissimilar from social media that mm -hmm. in that when your email list grows really big, uh, typically the open rates are going to drop. The open mm -hmm. rates are going to drop. The click through rates are going to drop. Right. And you know, even a lot of, a lot of big businesses that have hundreds of thousands of, of emails on their list, they have to actually get like dedicated servers and different things so that, you know, their emails are delivering properly and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, it just gets crazy. And so, um, don't, yeah, don't neglect a small, we're not saying big lists are bad. Like, yeah, right. you can make, you can make if more money. If it's a quality with, list. Awesome. Yeah, you can make more money, but don't neglect it because it's small because we hear all the time from students. What do they say? They go, well, I only have 120 people on my email list. Like I'm just going to wait. To, to email and we're like, no, you can make sales from 120 you, people. That's 120 yeah. prospective buyers. You can make sales, but also you're going to get better at emailing and you want, mm -hmm. you want to practice while your list is small so that when your list is 50,000, then you're really good at it. You know what I mean? Like practice. And you now, convert more. Now. You, yes. you want to suck when your list is small. Yes, <laughs> so no one's watching. What it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it, it's a good point. It's a, it's a really good point. Um, all right. Uh, I am going to take number two here. I feel like there was something like one more thing I want to say when you were talking about that, but I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, uh, okay, we're, we're going to, we're going to move on. Number two, number two, regularly release new products. Now this is when print on demand is really awesome and really shines because it makes it so easy to release new products. Essentially, you have a, what seems like an unlimited amount of products at your disposal, which you can list without ever having to touch, ship, pack, purchase anything, uh, and you can release those on your store. So there's no excuse if you're doing print on demand, this is something you should be doing regularly. Uh, you know, because it's good for your business and it gives people a reason to come back. It gives people a reason to come back. People love new arrivals emails. If you were passionate, think about a brand you like, Carrie, like a, a brand that you really like. When you see new arrivals, you get excited. It's yep. that's how I feel about Spiritual Gangster. That's how I feel about Lululemon. Like I want to see the new arrivals. I'm excited because yep. it's something new. It gives me a reason to open up and a reason to potentially buy again. So what I recommend is having a system in place to release new products at least once a month. And by system, essentially, I mean a process, uh, a process in place to do this. For example, maybe your goal is to release eight new designs or eight new products per month. 
And every Wednesday, you allocate time to create two new products. So that's two new products per week for four weeks. That's eight products a month. Every Wednesday, you drop or you, you at least create two products. And if you do that, if you block out a part of your calendar and say, Wednesdays from this time to this time are my design time where I design and I upload uh, into my Shopify store. And then if you want, you can have like a new drop Wednesday or new drop Friday once they're added to your store. And so there you've got more content for email. Every week you've got content, you're dropping two new designs. Um, and you've got that system in place that's going to keep you consistent, like block off a chunk of your calendar to do this. And it's going to help a lot. I actually love using my calendar on my phone and just blocking off chunks of time for certain tasks. Like right now, I am doing the 30 day content challenge with yep. our six figure founder community. Mm -hmm. And I have literally allocated a, a repeating event every single day in my calendar to remind me that I got to post on social media. I'm posting to Instagram at Ecom Legends Academy every single day for 30 days. And it just it, it just sets that reminder and you're just like, oh, it, it's in my calendar. You know, it's, it doesn't, it, it prevents the chance that you're going to forget or that you're just going to get really busy and then you're going to say, oh, I can't get to it. Uh, so it's, it's really, really helpful. And you can do the same for designing, like for adding new designs or for uploading products to your shop. So um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really important to realize that there's a typical life cycle for new products where initially sales spike, if it's a popular product, let's say it's a winning design, your sales will take off and you can scale that fast and hard is what we recommend. Like mm -hmm. go big at the beginning because over time it's going to, it's going to peak. The sales are going to peak for that product and then they're going to decline. And there's a lot of factors for that. There's design fatigue, there's copycats flooding the market, like, you know, putting the price lower than yours. There's a lot of reasons. Maybe you've just spent so much money on ads that Facebook has already shown it to all the low hanging fruit. Yeah. And so you get the ad fatigue over time. Well, it's just and hype, right? Why it's so important that you're regularly releasing new arrivals because every new arrival has the potential to be a winning designer product. And the more of those that you can release, the more your sales will continue to grow. This is a big part of our curriculum for six figure founder. Mm -hmm. We want our students to make six figures a year, every year. And the way that we want them to do that is by continuously coming out with winning designs. You yes. come out with one winning design, you, you success leaves clues. You, you, you see, like you, you, you look at it and you try to figure out what made this successful. And then you try to create more designs. You take elements of it, you, you remix it, you repurpose it. There's all sorts of things you can do to, you add it to other products. There's all things, all sorts of things you can do to keep spiking your sales. And it ends up being every year you're having multiple winners. That's yeah. the holy grail. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? I, I had something I was going to say. Oh, I was going to say it's uh, <laughs> a lot of it's just hype, right? You were, like you were you were talking about releasing new new products and they peak. And yeah, like you can build some hype and that's that's typical. Like, yeah, you're mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be it's going to be like peak and then decline a little bit. But um, new products are so important. I also love what you said about about always having content, right? If you're releasing new designs, you never have to struggle for content because you've always right. got new things to promote. You can put them on social media, you can put them in email. So I love that part of it. And I think one email think, a week, there you go. Boom. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're just, you're just keeping people engaged. Right. And mm -hmm. I also love what you said about, you know, it doesn't always have to be new designs. It can be, it could be, if you're selling t-shirts, you could be like, Oh, we just put, we just released new hoodies with this design. Right. Or we just released you know, a new product or it could be uh, a new, you know, it could be a, a new colorway that you never offered before. Yeah. Right. Like new seasonal that's, color. That's so, it that's can so be, cool. It can be piggybacking on holidays or special occasions. It can be it, like, you yeah. know, take your best selling design, find a way to tweak it to make it Christmassy. All of a sudden you have like a winning yeah. design that has now a Christmas theme. Put a little Santa Claus hat on it or some snow around it or repurpose yeah, that's, the wording a little bit, you know? That's one thing that you're always teaching that I love is that if you have a winning design, it's like, take advantage, put it on all the things, right? Make totally. all the different Milk it things, for right? Everything it's yeah. worth. And, and it's you got to do it early. You got to do it early because yeah. we know Ride that, you train. know, yeah, 
but also there's, you know, the copycats are going to flood the market eventually. Like they've got research software, like spy software, they're, they're, they're on us. And so you're going to make the most if you can go fast and hard right out of the gate. Um, For sure. Yeah. For sure. All right, let's move into number three. Yep. This is our last, this is our last uh, way to increase profit with, it, with it, repeat sales. As Adrian mentioned at the beginning, there's many more ways to do this, but these are some of our favorites and kind of the top three. So number three is e increase your retention rate by automating sales. So I want to talk to you about automation. And this is really like any way that you can get repeat sales without having to do anything manually, right? So how could you bring in more you know existing customers to come back and buy again without having to do things so you can set up automated email marketing flows or even on sms flows and there are other marketing channels that you can use to continue bringing customers back so automated email flows automated sms flows for example let's say you set up a post purchase email flow which is a just a series of automated emails that includes an incentive for someone to make a second pur purchase this is like the low-hanging fruit Right, mm, like when huge. somebody comes to your store and they buy from you, set up an email sequence to try to get them to make a second purchase. This is like yep. possibly the most profitable maybe, fruit. Maybe outside of like abandoned cart email sequence, like this is like the easiest profit, right? When yeah, they're somebody, excited about your brand. The, I've heard. I don't remember who I've heard say this. Uh, I've heard. I feel like I've heard many kind of marketing experts say this or whatever. But um, they say that the hot like the best time to get somebody to buy from you like the hottest time they're the warmest is right after they are they buy from you yes like, as soon as yes. somebody buys from you that's like literally the prime time to get them to buy again and that's part i think of the reason a lot of people don't think about that and they think that that's probably a terrible time because like well they just bought why would they buy yeah. again they're not that's gonna buy they're for a most while excited that's when they're most likely to open up your emails and that because of those things alone, there's a higher likelihood that they're going to buy. Plus, a lot of times people will see an ad and they'll just be taken straight to the product page and they'll just make the purchase and they won't look at anything else on your website, even though you have so many awesome products that they would love. And it's an opportunity for you to show them those. Let me ask you a question, Adrian, that might that might turn Our on way. some light bulbs for people. Let me turn on some All light right. bulbs for people. When you go to your favorite brand's website or whatever, and you order a new product and you're just pumped about that new product and you order it and you get that email that says your order is confirmed. What are you doing for the, what are you doing for the next week until you get that order in the mail? Checking the tracking number and seeing Checking it the is, tracking or? number, <laughs> clicking the tracking over yeah. and over. Like yeah, when yeah. is it going to be here? Right? Yeah. Yeah. The reason I'm saying, the reason I'm mentioning that my wife was just, she's recently been redecorating the house. So she's like, we got new pendants and we got uh, new pendant lightings and new chandeliers and we got new furniture and coffee table, all, all these different things. And so she's been redecorating the house and she is like, this thing will be like, it'll be here in two weeks. And she's checking it like 20 times a day. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. is it shipped yet? Is it shipped yet? Is it, has it made it from Dallas to Tulsa? Has it made it from Kansas city to talk? Like she's trying to, she's tracking every moment of these items. And I just think that's so interesting when you think about this, because when somebody makes a purchase from you, that means most people are going to be incredibly engaged with your emails. If you mm -hmm. send them an email, what are they going to do? They're going to be like, Ooh, is that my tracking number? Right. They're going to open it. Yeah. They're going to open it. Right. Like they're going to have a heightened sense of attention. And so this is a prime and excitement. Time. Yeah. Excitement. And this is a prime time. And then hopefully when they get your product, they're going to be like, this is an amazing product. And they're going mm -hmm. to want to, that, that's even going to make them warmer. So anyways, yeah. Set up a post-purchase email or SMS or both a flow that actually incentivizes them to come back and buy mm -hmm. again. And yeah. oftentimes you don't even need to include an incentive. Many times first-time customers uh, were lured in by the one product they saw on the ad and, and just make the purchase without even looking around at other products. So if yeah. that's the case, if they just bought the one product, just show them other products, right? Show even them other best sellers. Discount. Yeah, even without a discount and it can lead to repeat purchases. Totally. Um, the thing I love about automated emails or automated SMS is it, it's literally like having a sales team working for you around the clock. Mm -hmm. You make money in your sleep. You make money any time of the day because these emails are being sent without you even knowing. And yeah. it's not like you're paying these. They're not employees. You know, it's just like you're just paying for the email marketing or you're paying for the SMS marketing. It's like 
a, a very cost-effective sales team working for you 24 seven. I love yeah, that. Yeah, and that's the next point we have here is like, SMS and email marketing is, is so much cheaper, specifically email marketing. But mm -hmm. these are much cheaper than trying to run ads, right? Like mm -hmm. they're, they're much cheaper and much more effective uh, than running ads. And one more thing I wanted to add, it, add is that there are other, there's a number of other channels you can use to encourage repeat sales, such as consistent content marketing on your social mm -hmm. media. There's push notifications, which had kind of like, there was like this period of time where push notifications, everybody was like, oh, it's the thing. I remember those times. I was one of those people. Now, now I don't use them, but I, yeah. I used to. Uh, and then this is this is one that I love. All right, this is one that I love. That's actually not that difficult to do. Uh, and I've had I've had quite a few sales from doing this, but this is directly for repeat customers. Put some kind of card or promotion in the packaging. Yeah. Like even with yeah. print on demand, you know, with many print on demands, you can do this. You can include yep. a postcard. You can do this with Gelato and you can do it with Printful and, and Printful, other, you other, can do it. Yep. Yeah. Um, putting a card in there, you can, you can customize a card with the print on demand. You can, they, they will put it in that package with every, uh, with every order, because here's the great thing. Every package has to be opened and the contents have to be taken out. So, and they tend to read to, those messages. They're going to see that card. Right. Yep. And this is such a unique way. If you put it in there, it's like 20, 25% off on your next purchase. They're going to be like, dang. And, you know, added bonus. If you can put some uh, urgency on there, like that, it's expiring mm -hmm. soon. You can get them to come back and make a purchase pretty quick. So yep. that's, that's a way that I love would be, would be including something in the packaging. Yeah. You can even send physical mailers out. Uh, so there's this, there's this company called Postpilot. And um, that's essentially what they do. They're direct mail marketing, which no one really thinks of. Like, you know, every, I think I, I thought direct mail marketing was dead. I thought it was dead. But then you go on Postpilot's website and they're talking about how effective it can be for a lot of brands. And it's actually not that hard. Like this program was made to be easy to send physical mail to your customers and and maybe it'll work for some maybe it won't work for some i don't know i actually haven't tried out myself but they have essentially systematized or you know turned this into essentially like an app where you can just set this up and send out direct mailers to your customers and they're probably checking their mail they're probably going to see that from you mm -hmm. and there's a chance if they really love your brand that they'll be excited to receive it and if there's an incentive for them to make a purchase, maybe there's not even an incentive to make them a purchase. I don't know. Maybe I don't, you know, you can use it in a lot of different ways, but yeah. it's just like another kind of creative out of the box thing. And it seems to be making a comeback, you know, like I, I thought, I thought direct mail marketing was dead, but it is not. Well, it, it's this still, kind of, it, I feel like this kind of thing kind of happens from time to time where yeah. we're getting to this point where there is so much attention to digital that when you when you actually send some somebody something personal in the mail it means a lot more right mm. where it used to be like you remember it used to be all your junk mail was in the actual mailbox before yeah. everything was digital you know what i mean yeah. like, all the junk mail but now it's like if you get something in the mail that's kind of a big deal you know what i mean that's that's actually a really good point and it reminds me of something my wife said she told me that she values it way more when she gets a physical card in the mail from a friend then when she gets an email or, you know, a, a DM in social media from a friend saying something like happy birthday or congratulations on some big life event, when she loves getting physical mail mm -hmm. and when she gets it from a friend, she said, oh, I, I think of that so much more valuably than I do when it's digital. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it's just a preference for some, but you make a good point. <laughs> like it is true. Like mail used to just be there's so much junk mail. There still is a lot of junk mail that we get, but there's also a lot of digital junk mail that we get. I get way more junk mail in my email inbox than I do in my, Same. in my mailbox. Yeah. 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 yeah All right. So. Well, I think, I think that pretty much wraps it up. You know what, Adrian, yeah. I'm actually really surprised because I know I like for me, I got pretty passionate about the subject. I, I yeah. there's some Same. subjects I'm not as passionate about, and I wasn't expecting this to be one of them, but I am. I am really passionate about repeat sales because they're just so yeah. they're so much cheaper than the first time buyers. You know what I mean? And um, it, like it, it's where the it, real profit it, is. Yeah, exactly. It ensures the longevity of a brand, mm -hmm. and that's what everyone should be going for long term. You shouldn't be looking for the short term, 
you know, you, you want your brand to get more valuable over time. Cause if you decide to sell it, you can sell it for more, Absolutely. but also you can just grow your brand. If you decide to keep it, you can, it, it'll just keep going. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like this is going to help sustain the longevity of your brand. And this is going to help you have more consistent sales, more forecastable sales year after year. And that's yeah. really the goal is to make this like your long-term business, whether you want it to be your full-time job or whether you want it to be a side hustle, but to have like this long-term asset that is making you money Absolutely. and that is sellable if you decide that you want to sell it at some point. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, well, this was a lot of fun. I think we, we definitely got really fired up over this and uh, I'm with you, man, like any way to increase profitability and, and improve the like sales over a long period of time, all about it all Let's about go. it thank you so, for listening today yeah thank you guys so much for listening we hope you guys really enjoy this episode and we will talk to you very soon thank you so much for listening to this episode of the print on demand playbook podcast if you enjoyed this episode please leave us an honest review on whichever platform you are listening from we really really appreciate it thank you so much and we will see you very soon hey.